Hello, today I'm going to talk about the Thompson sampling algorithm. And this is going to be similar to the algorithm that we talked, we already talked about, which is the upper confidence bound algorithm. Both those algorithms, they are reinforcement learning algorithms. So you are going to get rewarded by doing the right thing. And we are going to use this algorithm to solve the multi-armed bandit problem, which is the problem that we already solved using the upper confidence bound algorithm. Then we are going to compare the two. Good. So let's talk about the Thompson sampling algorithm. So we are, we are going to use it to solve the multi-armed bandit problem. I have a video explaining this problem already. And it is about finding the best machine in the least amount of time. So exploring the least amount of time and exploiting as early as possible. But there is a video explaining it in more detail. And the Thompson, Thompson sampling algorithm uses this as in its algorithm formulation but we are going to implement this which may be the same thing not sure but like this is the Thompson sampling algorithm that we are going to implement in Python and in R and we ha we have already implemented the upper confidence bound algorithm in Python and R and we are going to do the same for the Thompson sampling algorithm but not in this video, in another video one for Python and another one for R and as this is a uh, it's not a deterministic algorithm so it is a probabilistic algorithm therefore we are going to end up grading distributions and these distributions will be based on this beta distribution using these two parameters. But we are going to talk more about that when we implement it. In this video, we are going to go through the intuition of the algorithm, of the Thompson sampling algorithm. Good, so let's start. Here, suppose that we have three machines. We are talking about the multi-armed bandit problem here. And here we have three bandit machines, or three machines. And these are the real expected value from those machines. However, we don't know that. That's what our algorithm is going to try to guess. Right? So we don't know that. But it, they are here just to, to show how the algorithm behaves. Okay. So we start by creating these distributions for each of our machines. In this case, we already have run the algorithm at least four times here, because uh, we created these four dots for the blue distribution, these four dots for the green distribution, these four dots for the yellow distribution, and I will explain what these dots are in the, in the following slides. But we have, in this case, we are not going to start from zero. In the algorithm, we have to. But in this case, just for explanation purposes, we are not going to start from zero. So suppose that we have already tested at least four samples here, uh, four iterations through our uh, algorithm. OK. OK. It's four, four iterations for each machine. Right? OK. So this algorithm we are not we are not trying to guess the distribution behind the machines because the distributions they are probably not going to be beta distributions so we are not going to guess that instead we need we uh, we need to find the I don't know what the the mu mu store which I believe it is the expected value you can call that I don't know but this value is what we are trying to, f to, to find. We are trying to find this value here. And our distributions should be getting closer and closer to this value, right? which is the expect real expected value. Our, ex ex um, our distributions should be getting closer to it with more confidence, meaning they would be 
uh, sharper here, not so broad. Okay, so let's go through the steps. So we start not like this, as I said before, we, this, we have already a distribution here, and I'm going to talk now. Uh, so we have gone through a few iterations already for the algorithm. Now we are going to go through a next iteration. So to run the next iteration, we are going to um, so we are going to get from each of these distributions. This is a single iteration. We are going to go through each of these distributions, and we are going to get a a random value off of it. Okay, so in this case, we got by random this value. You know, by by uh, by looking at this distribution, we can see that the most likely values are like around one standard deviation. So it, there are like here, it's the most likely you are going to get a value from this region, and very rarely you are going to get a value here in this region. Right? That's simple distribution. So in this case, we got this value for this distribution, this distrib the blue distribution. We got this for the uh, for the green distribution and this for the yellow distribution. Now we are going to select the value that had the biggest return. So here we have return in this axis. So we are going to get this value, which has the highest return. So, like the algorithm is thinking that this is the best, the best machine, the green one. Even though we know that it's yellow, the algorithm thinks that it's the green one because it returned the greatest value. Then we are going to select this as our machine. And analogously, this is the same thing that we find when we try to find the, the highest upper bound in the uh, upper confidence bound algorithm. Okay, so this is analogous to the uh, high, uh, highest upper bound. We are going to get the highest return here from this random distributions. Good. Then we pull the lever, right, from the machine, and the machine is going to output a actual value, a a like the real value. And then we are going to adapt our distribution based on that value. Okay, same thing that we did in the uh, upper. UCB algorithm. We are going to adjust the confidence and we are going to shift, in this case, the distribution more to this side because the real value was here. So we are going to shift it more to the left side and we are going to narrow it down because now we are more confident about it. Okay, so as our we thought that this would be the value and this ended up being the value, the real value we are going to shift this distribution to the left and you see that when we, sh when we do that we are going to get close to the real expected value and also we are going to make it narrower as you can see here. So we shift it a little bit and um, like make it narrower. Okay. Next, so that's that's one run, <laughs> and you, you, that's the run that you got. Now we can uh, do it again, so let's uh, iterate one, one more time. So let's say that now we, this distribution returned this value, this distribution returned this value, and this distribution returned this value. The biggest among these are, is this one, therefore we are going to consider this. And now we see that the actual, va then we are going to pull the lever for this machine, and the value that we get from the machine is this one. So as the real value is this and we thought that it was this, then we are going to shift our distribution to the left and make it narrower. And at the end, you are going to get something like this. You are going to keep shifting and the distribution will uh, follow, follow, follow statistics. So by the rule of large numbers, something like that, it's going to go it's going to get closer and closer to the real expected value, not the real distribution, the real expected value. We are not going uh, f 
after the distribution. And yeah, that's quite similar to the, what we had in UCB algorithm as well. So that's what we end up with. So here you can see that when we are going to get a new uh, a new iteration here, uh, we could end up with a sample here in blue in this place, or a sample here in green at this place, and a sample a sample here in yellow at this place as well. So even though we already know that this is the or the algorithm is pretty sure that this is the best machine already. Sometimes you may be, it's quite unlikely, but uh, the you may end up with a sample in the green distribution falling uh, to the right side compared to the yellow distribution, meaning that this is going to still be explored a few times. The blue one, well, I don't think this curve ever touches zero, but for this cover curve to get here it's quite unlikely, so maybe this machine is not going to be checked again. Because, you know, in the value that it returns, it's not going to be greater than the value that it re this returns. Maybe, yeah, that's uh, practically impossible. Okay, so that's the uh, Thompson sampling algorithm. We are going to implement it. It's actually simpler, or maybe I think it's simpler because I already know what the UCB algorithm is by now. But I, I think it's simpler than the UCB algorithm. And it is probabilistic and it's not deterministic. And we are going to talk about the differences about Thompson sampling algorithm and the UCB algorithm in another video, in the next video, by the way, which I'm going to do just in a minute. Okay, so that's it for the Thompson sampling. And yep, bye bye.